Okay. So welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IS in association with Bangalore IS Academy and Nama KPSC. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing about lake zonation or the different ways a water body can be classified into different zones that is vertically as well as horizontally. Okay, so when you take water bodies, these water bodies will show many kinds of spatial variations in both vertical and horizontal dimensions, which is important for us to understand the functions of an ecosystem. So here in this particular slide over here, I've mentioned the different zones which are found. So we have the littoral zone, we have the pelagic zone, we have the photic zone also known as the euphotic zone or aphotic zone also known as the profundal zone. We have the abyssal zone, the hadal zone and the benthic zone. Now the classification of the water body into different zones can be done horizontally that is across the water body as well as vertically that is into the depth of the water body. So the first two that is the littoral zone and the pelagic zone they represent the horizontal zonation of a water body whereas the rest represent the vertical zonation of a water body. So we'll just quickly go through each and every different zone of a water body. So the first is littoral zone. So first we'll take up horizontal zonation, littoral zone and pelagic zone and then move on to the vertical zonation. Now a littoral zone is very simple. The littoral zone is the near shore area of a lake. So the littoral zone extends outward from the shoreline to approximately the location at which the solar irradiance, that is the amount of sunlight which is received along the bottom of the lake is 1% or more when compared to the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface. So I hope you understood this. Say for example, we receive some amount of sunlight along the water's surface. Okay. So as you go deeper and deeper into the water body, the amount of sunlight which is present over there actually diminishes with depth. So the littoral zone extends to that uh, length or that distance from the shoreline along the depth. So if you compare the amount of sunlight which is uh, present or which is received along the bottom of the lake bed or the sea bed, it should at least be 1% or more of the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface. So this is known as the littoral zone. Similarly, we have the pelagic zone also known as the limnetic zone. The pelagic zone is the offshore area which begins from the outer margin of the littoral zone where the solar irradiance that is the amount of sunlight received along the bottom of the water body is less than 1% of the solar irradiance that is the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface. So the limnetic zone starts from the outer edge of the littoral zone where the amount of sunlight which is received along the bottom that is the bed of the lake is less than 1% of the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface. So this is known as the pelagic zone. So in this image over here on the right hand side now this particular image actually shows the extent of the littoral zone and the pelagic zone. So the littoral zone actually is along the boundary of the water body whereas the pelagic zone is always surrounded by the littoral zone. Uh, now since the extent of the littoral zone is based on the amount of sunlight which is received along the bottom then it will also depend upon the transparency of water and also the shoreline slope. So I am just going to repeat this. The extent of the littoral zone will depend on two things. That is the transparency of water and second the shoreline slope. So if the water is turbid, has suspended particles or biomass, then the littoral zone will be restricted. However, when it comes to the pelagic zone, the only, uh, just a second, yes, so uh, 
it will, the zone will be restricted now when compared to the pelagic zone over here the pelagic zone uh, will have autotrophs when compared to the littoral zone as well see along the littoral zone since we are able to receive sunlight along the waterbed as well it is able to support a greater population of autotrophs so a littoral zone apart from phytoplankton along the water surface will also support vascular plants and periphyton so we have already discussed what is periphyton that is algae attached to other plants or rock surface but when it comes to pelagic zone the only group of autotrophs is nothing but phytoplankton because the amount of sunlight which is received along the bottom is less than one percent which is not sufficient to support plant life so please remember along littoral zone you have phytoplankton you have plants you have periphyton uh, periphyton you have different kinds of autotrophs but when it comes to pelagic zone the only population of autotroph is nothing but phytoplankton now before moving over to uh, the vertical zonation over here now there is a transition zone between littoral zone and the uh, pelagic zone this is known as the sub littoral zone the sub littoral zone is nothing but a transition zone between the littoral zone and the pelagic zone now uh, which is actually the deepest area of plant growth so this uh, covers up your horizontal zonation next we move over to vertical zonation now when it comes to vertical zonation we have already discussed photic zone and aphotic zone i'll just quickly mention photic zone and aphotic zone once again okay now the photic zone is nothing but the upper layer of the aquatic ecosystem up to which the light penetrates within which photosynthetic activity is actually confined so this zone is actually a well mixed portion of the water body where the depth of the zone will depend upon the transparency of water so please remember when it comes to the photic zone you have respiration and photosynthesis both taking place now similar to your littoral zone the photic zone extends from the lake surface to a depth where the amount of sunlight received is at least 1% or more when compared to the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface of the water that is the extent of your photic zone now moving over to the aphotic zone the aphotic zone is the lower layer of the aquatic ecosystem where light penetration and plant growth are actually restricted meaning the amount of sunlight which is able to penetrate up to this depth is less than 1% of the amount of sunlight which is received along the surface therefore photosynthetic activity is not supported and hence you don't have photosynthesis or the production of oxygen but please remember respiration will still continue consumption of oxygen will also continue therefore the aphotic zone also known as the profundal zone is a zone of oxygen consumption aphotic zone is a zone of oxygen consumption okay next we have the benthic zone now the benthic zone refers to the bottom of the water body it refers to the bottom of the water body such as the lake bed or the sea bed and generally referred to as the lowest zone of a water body it is referred to as the lowest zone of a water body so the benthic zone is a part of both littoral zone and pelagic zone where you have your benthos so when uh, discussing about the different kinds of aquatic organisms i did mention benthos so benthos are the kind of organisms which are actually found along the benthic zone okay so further moving on ahead with vertical uh, zonation okay so we have two more that is the abyssal zone and the hadal zone now the abyssal zone or the abyss is more or less a part of the aphotic zone found 
at depths of 3000 to 6000 meters it is found at depths of 3000 to 6000 meters and this zone remains in perpetual darkness at low temperatures around 2 to 3 degree celsius so you don't even have that at least one percent of that sunlight is also not there so you have no sunlight at all it is always cold and it is always dark so due to there being no light at all there are no plants producing oxygen in this part of a water body so this is known as the abyssal zone finally we have the hadal zone okay now the hadal zone is the deepest region of the ocean lying within the oceanic trenches found beyond the abyssal zone at a depth of around 6000 to 11000 meters it forms the deepest part of your oceans found within the oceanic trenches this is known as the hadal zone now before completing this let me just quickly discuss about aging of lakes see like any organism lakes are born as they originate by various geological and geomorphic events and grow with time to change in their various morphological and functional characteristics and eventually die some lakes may also be made by man so we do have man-made lakes as well if for example if you take lake sudarshan in gujarat it is considered to be one of the oldest man-made lakes in india which is more than 2000 years old uh, now lakes may be recharged from underground or receive water surface runoff what or receive water from surface runoff but along with it it will also receive various chemicals chemical matters and minerals eroded from land so what happens is over a period of time they start to age with accumulation of organic and mineral matter and gradually get filled up this is as shown in this diagram over here so over a period of time the water body it gets filled up along the bottom and they eventually die however at present due to human activities this process of aging of lakes or the death or uh, the dying of lakes is actually increased the rate of this process at which it takes place has been increased that is why several lakes in bangalore we see several lakes in bangalore actually dying now this is actually a natural process but due to man-made activities it is actually increasing so as a lake dies it actually goes through three phases so the three phases of your uh, lake is, is is referred to as uh, oligotrophy mesotrophy and eutrophy now oligotrophy oligotrophic lakes are actually characterized by low nutrient values oligotrophic lakes are classified by low nutrient values which limits the lake's ability to support animal life now compared to eutrophic lakes uh, eutrophic lakes are characterized by high nutrient values which allows algae growth and may support animal life which feed on them now the mesotrophic lakes actually formed a transition zone from oligotrophic to eutrophic lake so once a lake reaches the eutrophic zone sorry or the eutrophic type of uh, uh, stage all the way from oligotrophic stage that is when a lake actually starts to die as is shown in this particular diagram over here so these are the three stages which a lake should naturally or due to human man-made changes will actually pass through before dying off however if the lake has to be saved we'll have to take up certain uh, processes or certain measures will have to be taken in order to tackle this such as on-site algae removal, sludge removal, flushing with nutrient-poor waters. All these things may be done in order to prevent the death or dying process of a lake. So this is a very simple concept known as aging of lakes. What you have to remember is that a lake obviously goes through three process or sorry three stages that is oligotrophy, mesotrophy and eutrophy.
okay now uh, just a simple question over here the question says you are planning to dive in a lake and are eager to observe underwater organisms both close up and far away so you would choose to dive into which lake you have oligotrophic lake eutrophic lake relatively shallow lake nutrient rich, rich lake see eutrophic lake nutrient rich lake is almost the same now if you have nutrient rich, uh, rich lake or eutrophic lake you have eutrophication which i'll be discussing in the uh, next video which is not conducive for uh, the growth of organisms or fish okay so obviously b and d is cancelled if you have a relatively shallow lake once again it is not going to support a great diversity so obviously it has to be oligotrophic lake so the correct answer is oligotrophic lake okay so thank you for watching this video if you do have any doubts please do write to us in the comment section thank you